All right, so really quick, we're going to talk about species. What exactly distinguishes a species? A species is a group of organisms that can produce offspring, but more importantly, the offspring also have to be able to reproduce. That means that it's not enough that they can have kids, but they have to be able to have grandkids. So, for instance, let's take a look at this Great Dane versus the Small Spaniel. Okay, those are the same species. Even though they look like two very, very different types of creatures because the Great Dane is so big and the Spaniel so small, they're actually the same species because if they were to mate, they would be able to have puppies and those puppies would be able to have puppies one day when they were old. So, even though they are a different breed, sort of like people might talk about a different race or a different nationality, they are still the same species because they can breed and they can have their offspring can continue to breed in the future. Versus, say, this liger over here, if you put a lion and a tiger together, you get what's called a liger, and that's what this picture here shows. You can see it has stripes like a tiger, but it has a mane like a lion. So a lion and a tiger mating together can actually have kids. They can have ligers, but the ligers are sterile. The ligers cannot have kids. So we know that a lion and a tiger is not the same species because they cannot have children who can then reproduce. They cannot have grandkids. The line ends with their liger offspring. Why is this important? Because it helps us identify the different organisms that are related, that can interbreed, which of course is important for agriculture purposes. It's important for anything that raises livestock. Um, it's important for us to understand how organisms work because we use them all the time in medicines, in creams, and basically there's nothing we use really down to the very dyes in our clothes and our food that do not come from plants or animals and we have to know their properties in order to understand what's safe and what isn't safe to use and what we can use in certain ways. And in order to facilitate communication, we have to be able to talk about these things in a way that makes sense to people all over the world. And to do that, we assign them a scientific name. We use the genus level and the species level of the taxonomy chart to identify an organism. We write it in italics and the genus is capitalized like this. Dog comes from the Canis genus, so we capitalize the C, and its species is familiaris. So Canis, you might know it as the word like canine, the dog breed, and then familiar, it's familiar, it's the dogs that are friendly, that you can have in your home. Dogs are generally basically the friendly version of wolves. And you can see it's written in italics. Humans, we're homo sapiens. Homo is our genus, it means same. Sapiens is knowledgeable, basically we're the smart people who are the same. We're, we're all the same smartness according to science. And the language they're using when they're coming up with these names is Latin, which is the language of the Romans, which we just studied, the Roman Empire. Why do we want scientific names? Well, because people all over the world have different names for the same creature. You might call something a mountain lion, I might call it a cougar, you might call it a bobcat or a puma or a panther. Someone who doesn't, who isn't in the know might think we're all talking about different creatures when really it's the exact same cat. So we call it, with its Latin scientific name, Puma con color, or cat with color, basically. And so that's what you need to know about scientific names, that it uses the genus and the species level, the most specific levels of the taxonomy chart. The genus always comes first, and it's always capitalized.